fallible. Waterfall. Damn. Fantasy. No, but she said she liked fantasy. Starscape. Philosophy. Vitality. Okay. Whew. I, wait, when did I portray Fickle? Why did I portray Fickle? Anyway, another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Snake, says Sayori. Yo, Sayori, I say. Looks like you're in a good mood today. She laughs. I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood, I say. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. She says, speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? I say, no thanks, because I'm a jerk. Eh? She replies, that's not like you at all. I say, I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? She says. Why that, all of a sudden? I say, no reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. She says, ah, that's not for boys. She... Nay Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. Oh, that, that kind of purse. Not just like a general purpose purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and, let, and lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. She laughs. I knew it, I say. I can see right through you, Sayori. You're a leech! That's not fair, she says. How do you even know? How did you even know? I say it's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one other thing. You're always hungry. And so, that only leaves the one option. She says a word. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. I say, if you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Yuri laughs. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? Said, I say... I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. She's startled. I wasn't listening or anything, except it was. It was just something in my book. Yuri, says Sayori. Tell Snake to let me borrow some money. What? Yuri says, that's. Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. You know, with the job you don't have. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Yuri, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Yuri laughs. I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. Yuri says, that's... There's no way you could think that. Sayuri says, you were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution? Retrib... Okay. Retribution. Yuri responds. Yuri, Sayori says that. Yuri continues, still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Sayori laughs. Don't let her fool you. So, oh, wait. Okay. Don't let her fool you, I say. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. Sayori says, but... You wouldn't have come if, they, if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. And I say, you're damn right. But come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Sayori giggles. Pwap. Uh, Sayori is alarmed. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow, she says. What was... Eh? A cookie... Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. That would hurt like fucking... That would hurt. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution, I add. Actually, that one almost worked, says Yuri. Natsuki laughs. I, w I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Natsuki, says Yor Sayori. That's so nice of you. I love getting hit in the face with cookies. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. How big is this cookie? Jeez, just eat it, I say. 
Say Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Show good, she says. Mmph. She... Sayori suddenly clasps her hands around her mouth. She's choking. No one knows what to do. She... I bit my tongue, she says. Natsuki laughs. You're going to... Through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a, takes a bite of her own cookie. Sorry, he says, Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. They're the same cookies. Can I try it? Maybe they're not the same cookies. Gee, says Natsuki. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate, she says. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine, Sayori says. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. I have also seen pizza side cookies, but I don't think that's what Natsuki made. Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. And then choke slams her onto the floor. I get, Natsuki says, I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um, says Sayori. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey, hey, says Natsuki. Did you seriously just do that? Sayori laughs because she has no respect for personal space or germs. Mouth full, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well, as this turns into My Little Pony. Jeez, says Natsuki, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh, says Natsuki. Where's Monica, anyway? Yuri says, good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me, says Sayori. S uh, I say, yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, says Yuri. That's a bit unusual. Sayori says, Sayori says, I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay, says Sa Natsuki. She probably just had something to do today. Next scene change, I need to get a drink. She's pretty popular after all. Eh, says Sayori. You don't think she... She has a... Yuri laughs. I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Sayori laughs. That's true, I hate myself. Natsu Natsuki says, excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Monica, sorry, I'm super late. Wow, that's not what she said. <laughs> sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, there you are, I, <laughs> I respond. <laughs> Monica says, I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Sayori says, eh? Monica chose the club over a boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Monica's his b, b boyfriend What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. I say, what? And then I say, ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was at, was study hall. To be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. She laughs. Natsuki says, that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. Monica says, I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Yuri says, piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Oh, Yuri plays music. Monica says, ah, I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool, says Sayori. You should play something for us, Monica. You know, despite the fact that you don't know how to play. Monica says, that's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a le little bit better, I will. Yay, says Sayori. That sounds cool, I say. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so, she replies. In that case, I won't let you down, Snake. Monica smiles sweetly, and all the other girls vanish from the room. Ah, I say. Didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Monica responds, ah, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks, she says. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? I say, no, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. That's weird. I say, hey, Yuri. Eh? Ah. <laughs> All those little fucking uh, noises. Ugh. I suddenly notice that Yuri's reading f f a different book from the one we've been reading together. I say, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, no, Yuri says. I was just kind of waiting for you. I say, ah, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? She says, yes, let's. 
Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? I say not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that, that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. She continues, not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with the filter inside. That's an odd point. She says, Can you hold this for a second? I say sure. Yuri hands me Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm gonna burn this whole place to I mean I'm gonna plug this into the and at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. She says, okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. I say, ah, uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not, she says. Shall we go, then? I say, yeah. Monica asks, Monica asks, where are you two off to? Eh, I say. We're just, Yuri's gonna make some tea, so... Suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. I continue, we're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay, she says. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? I say, that's none of your fucking business, Monica. I mean, that's... And Yuri says, Monica, please mind your own... Wow! Monica says... Or Yuri says, God. Yuri, Yuri says, Monica, please mind your own fucking business for once. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Snake and Club activities? Eh, says Monica. I'm alarmed. My mouth agapes. Monica. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Yuri says, humph. Then let's go, Snake. Say, ah. Yuri quickly exits the room, and I follow. Scene transition. I will be right back. Just like a minute. My mouth... Uh, not, my, my throat's dying. I'm dying. Okay. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. And yes, Zavarin, the game is actively pushing Yuri towards me. How can my dreams are made real by Yuri? I spoke without thinking, she says. How could I say something like that? I say Yuri. She says I just. Something about the way she said that made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? I say no, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. You... <laughs> I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Yuri says, Snake, what are you talking about? How come you even want to do something bad? You're being nice to me. Why are you encouraging bad behavior? I say, because nothing that you do is, bad, is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. She says, ah, poetry. No, no, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? I say, why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. Though I can try. What kind of friend would do that? Yuri says, friend, you say. How can I have friends? Yuri lifts her head. Snake. I really like being friends with you. I say, laughter, laughter, laughter. Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that because it's an awkward thing to say. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, 
She says, ah, yeah. Shall we go? I say, yeah. You and I work walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Yuri says, Snake, do you like oolong tea? Now I'm thinking of Dragon Ball. I say, yeah. Anything is fine. English breakfast is fucking awful. You give that to me, I'll cut your throat. Here it says, very well. Here it sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. I say, you really do this properly, don't you? Yuri <laughs> replies, of course. <laughs> I mean... Maybe? She says, I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. I say, even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? That was a... Fine. She says, hoo-hoo. In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. I say, ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. I said that weird. <laughs> I continue, you must be in a good mood now. Is that so, she replies. I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do, when it's you who's around, anyway. I say, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. She says, you're always worrying about me, Snake. We've only known each other for three days, but it's very endearing. I say, that's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this this pressure. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea from each of us. Yuri says, Snake, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Why is that, I ask? It's a little bit easier on my back. Those chairs, those chairs look standard, I guess. I can read with them back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. I say, ah, sorry, I didn't realize. She says, no worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Wow, that sucks. I say, is that so? I wonder why that is. Yuri says, it's well, most likely because of my... Ah, uh, my... I say, your posture, right? I was hunched over like that while reading. She says, yes, that's totally not what I was referring to, but thank you. I have terrible reading posture, so that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough, I say, because I'm an idiot. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Uh, I have some chocolate as well. Even though chocolate is actually best for Sayori. It's a small bag of chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy book radar. I take it, since it'll go oh, it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync. Oh. As if in sync, a cat gets in front of the screen, and I can no longer read. She's standing here, sniffing my water, and she's gonna fucking tip it over. Ugh. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. Here says, I can't see too well. I'm alerted. Yuri slides closer until her shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri is always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. She says, your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to make sure I don't... Now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest? What? I need to see a picture of how we're positioned, because this... Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. Ah, maybe Zevran, who knows. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little, because nothing's happening, and it's all in my head. But the teacup between my legs... I guess we're in like a... I'm hesitating to say the word Indian style, and I don't know why. I think that's a crisscross apple. So I fucking hate that, though. I'm going to say Indian style. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry, I say. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. I say, or Yuri says, that's, that's okay. I won't take any. 
I say, are you sure? Cross-legged. Yeah, there we go. Well, she says, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. And God forbid we ruin one of the books. It's not like we have a spare... I mean... See, ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. I'm awful. She says, no need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure, I ask? Of course, she says. Oh, I thought there was a galaxy behind her for a second. I have to say, this is really good art. Overall. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so I don't have... She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Snake says, I say, well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that. Yuri closes her lips around over it. She says, eh? Yuri's expression... Wow, she's barely holding on to that fucking thing. Her expression breaks. Did. Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. The fucking... It disappeared. She says, snake. I say, sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. She says, that's... Well... You were just helping, because I'm holding the book. That's something that friends do. Oh god. Damn it, Robo. Fuck. Robo, why did you point the ears out? Those are awful. Those are really bad ears. Holy shit. That's, oh, gonna have to cover that up or something. I say, I mean, not really into this kind of, not really in this kind of context, but I say, yeah, that's all it was. Just friends. Yeah, says Yuri. Then, you don't need to stop or anything. Oh, oh, oh. I say, I see. The situation has gotten really tense, and anyone watching us will be like, what the fuck? They've known each other for like 10 minutes. Yuri then Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by expression that she can't even fo that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze, and as her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths, because that's how breathing works. I raise my arm. Ah, she says. Just like before, Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone. That's fucking great. That's fucking great. Me, uh, Yuri and I freak our shits. Yuri jolts back. Monica says, it's time to share poems. Snake, you can help Yuri put away the rest of the tea stuff, right? I say, yeah, of course. You weren't looking, right? Yeah, great. Monica says, okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. That was fucking great. That, I love that. They did that, mm, they did that perfect. Yuri says, I'll, I'll take care of the cups. I say, yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups on the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Until next time. Well, let's start with Yuri. Let's just do what we always do. You know, that one time we did it. Do Yuri, then Sayori Natsuki, Monica. <laughs> Chocolate blocked. <laughs> oh, that's so good, Severin. That's really good. Yuri says, let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. I say, do you like it? She says, snake. This one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? 
just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. I say maybe that's why you did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. How would I notice that? She says, I'm not used to this. Used to what, I ask? I don't know, she says. I say, it's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. She says, yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. Uh, she continues, it probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. I say... Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. I say, really? I don't believe it. She says, I only really write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. I say, do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh, I say. Even your close friends. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway... Do you want to share the poem you wrote today? She says, yeah, I do. If it's with you. Oh, I shared first. All right, here we go. <clears throat> the raccoon. It happened at the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering. Yeah, that says scuttering. A raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as unordinary as an as an unordinary human? Alright. I give the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious, well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hunger, hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. You can say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian, Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Ooh, dark. It, it, Saverin, it would be nice if I could click this. It, most modern games, you can click text like this, and I'll just show you, like, Times New Roman or something. Something simple. She says, um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I say, I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical, also involving dead raccoons. I don't know if, if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. She says, that's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. I say, yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean, because I'm an idiot. She says, well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's the sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, some, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. I say, why do you keep them to yourself? She says, because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Snake? I say, well, yeah, I guess I do. She says, I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's, even if it's a little difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things, uh, apparently, without evidence. Writing, listening, two things. <laughs> there really aren't people, many people like you, Snake. Say, so that's, that's exaggerating a little bit. I'm also good at putting candy in your mouth, so don't forget about that. Yuri says, it's just how I feel. Never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now, I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. I say, it's, it's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. 
For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Phase shift. To Sayori. Ah, oh, Comic Sans, ugh. Oh. Oh, it says Sayori. I like this one, Snake. There's some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad, I say. Does that mean it's even better than yesterday's? She says, let me think. I don't know. I'm dumb. I guess I like them both. She giggles. I say, that's not very helpful, you know. She replies, well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why... I... <laughs> but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I, you know what? You know what? If a poem makes you feel something, then you know what? It's a fine poem. It's fine. Uh, she says... Uh, no, this is a fucking internal monologue right here. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the... You know. Yeah, maybe, I say. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. She says, yeah. Me neither. <laughs> Why don't you at least try giving us some thought? She says, aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. I said, yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? She says, well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever, I say. Anyway, let's see, she says Sayori. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah, she says. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy... Oh, did I just skip two? Nope. Happy and sad, I say? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. She says, well, I like the happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give that rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow. <laughs> I say, Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. And I mean it. She says, eh, it is. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. After only a couple days. Thanks, Snake, she says. I should go write that down, then. You can read my poem now, okay? Alright, here's Bottles. 